Uh, currently, I work for uh, 24-7 Sports. Been with them for uh, four, going on five years. Um, before that, I worked for Scout, another one of the recruiting um, websites, no longer here. Uh, the first one I worked for was Rivals initially. Um, of course, they're still around. Yep. Our, <laughs> in fact, it, it, was, it was funny that if it wasn't for Scout going bankrupt, I wouldn't be at 24-7 Sports. So it, it all worked out. But um, prior to that, I used to cover uh, Pennsylvania. Well, not used to. I covered Pennsylvania high school football on uh, PennLive.com um, with videos and articles, and I did that for at least between 2006. I want to say 2014 um, for free, which is kind of crazy. But that, that enabled me to uh, get my stuff out to a bigger audience, which was originally my plan as far as uh, putting my name out there. In fact. Um, Coach Cleasy comes from a message board name. Um, I used to call myself Joe Cleasy, at like Joe Clark. Just, just made it, put some swag to it, put Joe Cleasy. So I used to do the highlight videos um, under that name on the Penn Live board. Then it got to a point where I would do basketball highlights, and people would actually see who I was before I was just doing football. So you couldn't tell who I was, but um, that's how I started in the game. Um, just doing highlight videos and uh, just trying to help kids get exposure. I mean, it's still, still the same mission today, um, maybe on a bigger bigger scale. But um, it's just what I've been trying to do since 2006. So I got into the game um, trying to help kids out. And um, just being able to do that this whole time, I think, has enabled me to stay around for a little bit. Absolutely. And become the legend that you are. And it always comes from the intention. And, and in this game, in this game, you can see, you know, who's in it, you know, for what for what reasons. Jordan Mills, what's up, man? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. He just dropped the link. But, you know, that that is the most important thing. And people have been able to see you uh, and see what you've done for athletes highlighting. You mentioned that you kind of started on the video side of it with reviews. When did you start getting into the camp scene and the in-person scene, and how did that kind of become implemented in your overall uh, kind of role covering covering the space? Well, I, it's um, I used to just do highlight videos around the Harrisburg area, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I have a friend named uh, Gene Hankerson. I call him VIP. He used to work for Scout.com. Um, early two thousands. I met him before even getting into sports, whatever. But long story short, he worked for the Michigan site on scout.com. And so his job would be to cover the athletes that, one, are being uh, recruited by Michigan in the Northeast area. And so he put me on to going to events and covering them that way. And I would just shoot video. And he would take me to uh, seven on sevens, um, new level athletics. They're now called Pylon, but back in 2007, 2008, they were called New Level Athletics. I hope it's not Next Level, but I think it was New Level Athletics. And so I would go to their, their seven on sevens. Um, Rivals camps weren't out back then. I think there were a couple other camps that were out. Um, Scout might have had a couple camps too, but that's how I got started. I used to go to events. My friend Gene Hankerson, um, he showed me that there was a, basically a bigger world in Harrisburg and that there were more athletes out there that I could possibly cover. And so that's how I got started by doing the videos. And then I would, um, at, at a particular point, I realized that I could post the videos online, but I know this sounds crazy, but it's like, all right, people like to read too. You know what I mean? So I, that's when I started writing as well. So, and this is before Huddle. This is before 24 seven sports. They weren't even out back then, like around 2006 through 2008, I believe, 2009. I think they came in 2010. Um, so it was just Rivals and Scout. And most of their content really was based on the Division One athletes, the top-notch athletes. And again, there wasn't no huddle. So me being able to get out there and get video footage, and it's the same thing as today, getting that video coverage, getting that video out there, I think helped me a lot as far as name recognition and just people seeing you know, what, I, you know, what I do or what well, I'm still doing, but what I did back then. And back then, what's funny, I used to actually send videos out to some of the some of the guys that are still in the game right now. Like, I won't say his name, but um, Noah Spence. Um, I think he's still in the NFL, but he uh, played at Bishop McDevitt locally and went to Ohio State. 
and went to another school too. But the point I'm trying to make, he was one of the top kids in the nation. So back then, and this this will age me, but you know, it was just DVDs, right? And so I would get copies of his highlights. Actually, I made his highlights, and that could be verified. But I would send a copy of the highlight films to these recruitment guys so they can have some to put on their website. And back then, you know, that was premium content, um, getting highlights of people. Now everybody has huddles, so it's not the same really, but that's, I think that's part of what helped me as far as, um, I guess, putting my name out there. Not that I was trying to put my name out there, but it's just a consequence of what I was doing at the time. Yeah, and it seems like one thing is kind of solve huddle with game film, but with the coaches who are kind of in control of uploading it, that's just kind of one side of the story. And now you have camps, you have seven on seven, you have, you know, different, you know, training now and, and, and video being everywhere and, and it being more of an athlete's story uh, and, and playing a role in the exposure, especially as we saw through the pandemic, what we were able to do with the platform where athletes who hadn't even played when I was coming up, I had to start, you basically had to start from your sophomore year through your senior year, unless you were really having a big season to get enough film to, to get offered. And so um, now through the pandemic, athletes who hadn't even started a game on varsity, but were able to get their film out, being able to get on circuits are four, you know, three, four star athletes. And so it's just kind of changed on that front. And, and obviously you've adapted with it and been on the forefront. You know what? It's, it's funny. I mean, it, it took a pandemic to kind of point it out, but you know, when I when I I started doing my camps probably back in 2015, I'm going, yeah 2015 2016, I thought it was some value to actually tape in the camp and tape in the reps, um, because when I was on my travels years before, I mean, you know, now it doesn't sound crazy to people, but back then, college coaches were really looking at the videos I was putting up. You know what I mean? Because sometimes they can't get a kid to camp. So seeing them run in space, seeing them go do go through drills or go even even one on ones, things or just verifying certain things. Um, I think I think the camp film helped 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 out a lot. And as you said, um, a lot of these kids again offers word of mouth um, camp film. I mean that's pretty popular now. Like you know, with, with the kids not being able to go to the college prospect camps last year i mean that was premium you know a, a lot of people start live streaming their camps and kids were actually able to get looks off those um off those videos and i know from my camps i mean I, again I don't, I don't like i won't name drop and like brag about it but i do know for a fact a lot of kids um got at least a look or some attention or some contact and i've had power five coaches calling me asking me to verify certain things and it's like wow they, they actually look at this stuff so you know I, that's why i don't really argue with people on you know on the internet as far as the um, value of you know having camps where college prospect i mean where college coaches aren't at my thing is this all these um all of these um coaches are able to press the play button you know what i mean so why not look at some video especially if it's going to be of some value to you at some point and it's getting easier and easier to click the play button, to know where to go, to click the play button, you know, where the video content, um, where things are at, you know, keeping them simple in front of them. Obviously, the most difficult thing is trying to chase it around on all of these different platforms and knowing where to look. And that's where, you know, guys like you are, are trusted and our go to guys because you are boots on the ground, finding them, you know, giving that feedback uh, and the guy that everybody looks to in terms of knowing where uh, where it's at. 